Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Optronix LED off-road light bar. This is a 9-inch bar with mixed beam double row lights. Part number is UCL23CB. Here you can see what a difference it can make in lighting up your trailer and making sure you can see what you're doing. Now these LED light bars are designed typically for use on vehicles when you're off-road but more and more common we're seeing them used in a lot of other situations. With the shorter seven and a quarter that we've got here, it makes perfect situation inside of an enclosed trailer like what we've got. Now the LED lights give us a nice, clean, pure, bright light. If you've seen LED as compared to a regular incandescent style bulb, certainly a big difference there and that's something a lot of people are after. Also with the LED type lights, they have a much longer lifespan. We don't have to change out the bulbs all the time and they draw less power. These lights are all gonna be ran off of a 12 pole from the vehicle. So we don't wanna overload that system and draw a bunch of unnecessary power through there. Also being in this enclosed space, these generate less heat than what you get out of an incandescent bulb. So when you're in here working on something or if you've got something you need to do, you don't have to worry about the heat build up quite as bad. Now before we turn the light on, we can take a look at our reflectors. It gives us a really good mix of light. So whether you're putting this on a vehicle or gonna use it in a space like this, the four that we have on the outside, you can see that reflector has multi different angles to it. That helps to spread that light out over a very nice large area. So that's gonna be our flood style beam. It's gonna flood the area with light. And then the four that we have there in the center, those have a really high polish reflector. That allows that light to be concentrated and projected forward, giving us that spot beam that we're also looking for. Now, of course, you're not always gonna be mounting a light like this inside of an enclosed area. A lot of times we're gonna see these on the front of Jeeps, trucks, cars, you name it. So they've gone and taken a few measures to help protect it. We've got the polycarbonate lens, so if you do get rocks or stuff that hit it and bounce off, not really going to have to worry about the chipping and the cracking that you might get out of glass. The entire housing is aluminum. That's going to help to not only dissipate any of the heat that's generated through the fins, but also resist corrosion and things like that. And of course, it's touched off with a nice black powder coat finish. And it does have the IP65 rating for dust and moisture resistance. Here you can see the fins on the back that help to get rid of any heat that is generated by allowing it just like a radiator to cool much more efficiently. The light's also been designed to work with 12 or 24 volt battery systems, so regardless of which one you're operating on, the light's going to work fine for you. Now the LED lights draw, like we said, a lot less power than the old incandescents used to. But if you are going to be running it to an onboard 12 volt battery source, pick up a relay kit to put in line and make sure your switch lasts a very long time. You won't have to constantly replace it. Now overall with comparing this with other LED light bars that are out there, I definitely think this is going to be one of the better of the bunch. Um, it's not quite to the level of what you see of the Vision X which use the very highest level possible of LEDs available, but it does effectively transfer the lumens and light up an area very, very well. It's a cost-effective solution to get a lot of light out in front of your vehicle or get a lot of light in your work area. Puts out about 1,550 effective lumens, which is very, very bright as compared to a lot of other lighting systems that we've been used to in the past. The overall dimensions, with brackets included, will be about 10 and a half inches wide, about four and three quarters of an inch tall, and about three and a half inches deep. Now our installation is going to be inside of an enclosed trailer. Uh, the basic principle behind it is going to be exactly the same, regardless of where you want to mount the light. You've got a ground and a power, and you're going to have two attachment points. It's really pretty straightforward. We're mounting it right up here. This is going to be we're actually going to mount a pair, one on this side, one on the other side. But this is going to allow us to see what's going on inside of the trailer. The customer wants to upgrade it. I think it's a really good idea. We need to find our halfway point or mount it, you know, figure out where you want it to mount. 
I'm just gonna split the two sides here and kind of center it up. Just kind of give us good look quality. And then on our brackets, we wanna get those holes marked. Now we're gonna grab a center punch. That'll allow us to mark the center of each of those. And we'll get the two holes drilled out. Now, be careful, you can see there, we got a little wiring back behind ours, so you going to be really careful that you don't damage that or drill through that. If you're using the mounting hardware provided, you'll want to use a quarter inch drill bit. See, on the end of the light here where our bracket goes on, we've got one of the shorter bolts, the flat washer. Once we've got those secure, we're going to use the longer bolts with a flat washer on those. Now, they're a little bit longer than this when you get them to work with many different thicknesses of material. But keep in mind, you can trim those off to a length that'll be appropriate for you. So now we're going to place that bolt through the bracket. And on the bottom of it, so we've got our rubber isolator that just helps to Going to protect it from being bounced around too much. Going to give us something to kind of dampen it as we head down the road. We get one side started at a time, and it, they do provide the Allen key for you to allow you to tighten that down. And we'll do the same thing on our other side. Once we get started, we'll snug down our bolts, make sure our isolators are pretty even and tucked in behind properly, and we can start to tighten them down. Now of course at some point we're going to have to hold that nut on the back to keep it from spinning, and when you do you'll want to use a 3 8 wrench for it. Alright, now like we said before, black is going to go to your source of ground, red needs to go to your 12 volt. Our ground source is both, well, both power and ground are ran right up here on the top. So, so we're going to make our connections. Start with my ground. We're going to use a couple of heat shrink butt connectors to get this connection made. Part number is DW05745. I'm going to twist those together. and slide our butt connector over. Doing it this way rather than using like a quick connector, it's gonna give you a lot better connection. You won't have to worry about coming loose or anything like that down the road. Once that's in place, we'll crimp it down. Strip back the other side. And it's of course gonna to go to the other side of the butt connector. Red needs to go to your 12 volt. And we'll just use a heat source to shrink those down. Now you can use a heat gun for this. You can use a mini torch. You can use a lighter. The trick is, is that you just don't want to overheat them. Let's give it a little bit of heat. It starts to turn clear and you can see how it starts to shrink down. Once it gets fully shrank, it looks like the wire gets bigger. Then you'll notice a little clear gel on the end of it. That's gonna indicate you've got a good connection made there and we won't have to worry about any corrosion issues. Just like that. All right, now we'll get our wires tucked back in. Tidy up the wire from our light there. And then we'll be ready to test it out. And that's gonna complete our look at the Optronics LED 9-inch off-road light bar, part number UCL23CB. 